Hey y'all, I'm Kaylee Shore, and I'm super excited to be part of Pop Blitz Magazine's Artist Spotlight. Welcome, Kaylee. Glad to have you. Thank you for having me. Super stoked. You just finished up a bunch of CMA shows. I did. I did. I had like eight shows. It was super crazy, but I had such a good time. Was it your first CMA? Um, I had played last year, but I played with uh, the song Suffragette, so we did two shows um, on the CMA close-up stage. So it was my first year doing like solo stuff and full band stuff, so it was a lot, um, a lot different. And I had gone as a fan before, too. So What was like the highlight of the CMA Fest for you? You know, the first day was really crazy. I played the Highway Fine stage at Ascendi Amphitheater, which was like the biggest show I've ever played in my life. Um, and that was like the first one, so I like psyched myself out about it, and thankfully once, once it was done, I could just kind of like relax a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, but I played that, and then I had, like, an hour to get from um, the, the kickoff party to um, the CMT red carpet. So it was, like, super busy. But I, like, just thrive on that stuff. So CMTs must have been amazing. Yeah, it was really, really fun. There were a lot of great performances. So I wanted to go so yeah. bad. <laughs> no such luck. So next year, yeah. who was, like, the best performance? Karen Underwood, Karen I think, Underwood. yeah, with the big, like, gospel choir in the back. Oh, my gosh, she was amazing. And didn't they have, like, all these different, like, special guests? Like, I know there were some pop artists teaming up with country mm -hmm. artists. And all yeah, that. they had, uh, actually, Pitbull and Cassie Pope and Leona Lewis, which is pretty crazy. Um, but just the costumes. Like, I feel like it's mm -hmm. just, like, a really, like, funky award show. It's kind of like country's VMAs, so you can get... There's a lot of fun looks on the red carpet and the performances, and I just had so much fun. It was my first time... Um, going to an award show and sitting in the artist section. Like, I've walked a red carpet before, but, like, we were literally, I was, like, literally right behind Daniel Bradbury, and I was like, this is so cool. My mom saw me on TV, so now she, like, is like, oh, yeah, you actually do music. This is cool. <laughs> <laughs> Validated by mom. Yep. That's awesome. I liked your Wild Horse show. Thank you. That was super oh. fun. Super fun to play. That was great. Like, just seeing you in, like, a full band setting with, you know, a, sh a yeah. show and instruments instead of, you know, stripped down, like, yeah. I usually see you at Song Suffragettes. Well, and I'm playing um, the Wild Horse again on June 30th, so it's going to be super fun. I love that stage because mm -hmm. it's really big and you can do a lot with it. The lighting is super fun, and I just had such a good time. I love that venue. Yeah, me too. It's, it's like the first place that I saw a show when I came to Nashville. Yeah, I went, and, I went and saw Vertic Horizon and Tonic there probably like a year and a half ago, and had like it was just such a great show. Mm -hmm. so. Well... To back up just a little bit, um, introduce yourself for those that don't know you. Well, I'm Kaylee Shore. Um, I'm 21 years old. I'm from Portland, Maine. I've been in Nashville for about three years this August. Um, I absolutely love it, and I write and sing country music. Country is so broad. I mean, yeah. can we specify a little bit more than that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, I grew up listening to so many different types of music, and... Um, was always uh, really drawn to country music just from the songwriting. I'm a big fan of like structure and um, melodies and hooks and stuff that kind of all points to uh, like very cohesive music, you know. Um, and I feel like country is just so like it's just it's easy to listen to. The stories are fantastic. It's inspiring. It's heartbreaking. It's all these great things. Um, and so I was really drawn to that. But I also listened to a lot of um, rock growing up. So Vertic Horizon, Tonic. Um, I loved Michelle Branch. My first concert ever was um, Michelle Branch and the Dixie Chicks at Madison Square Garden, which was still the best concert I've ever been to. So I think that that's a huge reflection of my sound. I also loved TLC growing up. So I think you can hear a lot of those influences um, in my music. So it's it's a country with a side of pop, maybe a little bit of R&B sometimes. Um, and definitely some rock guitars there, too. I feel like those artists were influential women, you know, girl yeah. artists back in the day, and yeah. now it's kind of what, you know, what you're doing. Thank you. You have a huge message that you're trying Thank to get you. across right now. Absolutely. I mean, I think at the, the core of everything I do musically, it's um, definitely want to empower girls. I mean, those, those women did that for me, and if I can, you know, be that for somebody else, it's like a dream come true. Um, but, yeah, I, I really just want to put out put music out there that I feel like is, is honest it's something that's on my heart it's you know and sometimes there's stuff that like I might have been afraid to say a couple years ago and now I'm not because I'm like you know what this is what being a woman is this is what being a human is and I shouldn't have to censor it you know for my music so your songs are so empowering thank you so positive thank you, you know? like, I think girls everywhere you know 
are going to be drawn to it, well, especially Fight Like a Girl. Thank you. Yeah, I'm really, really excited that that got to be the, the first song off the project. So, mm -hmm. And that's like the, the goal I know when you started Song Suffragettes, um, Lena and a few others have spoken out, was to get artists on the radio, mm -hmm. female artists. Yep. Absolutely, and um, to see that happen with Fight Like a Girl has just been like the most like cool full circle moment ever because it's what the song was written about was the lack of women on country radio. So um, just a really great irony that that happened. <laughs> Do you feel like that's what sets you apart as an artist? Um, like the female empowerment thing? Yeah. Um, you and know, honestly, more? yeah. I think I mean I would say it's so hard to to put a, a finger on that, um, but I, I would say, you know, what I think could set me apart as an artist is just not being afraid to speak out about stuff, and I'm pretty unfil- I've never had a filter. I've tried, but I've never been able to have one, so I think that you can definitely hear that in my music, um, but I mean, I think that women right now in country music are trying so hard to be empowering because they've seen, um, you know, what what it's looked like for us for the past, mm -hmm. you know, five years. And so everyone has stepped their game up. They want to put out a positive message to young girls. They want to empower each other and the community of Nashville. And so I really think that just this new crop of girls that's coming up is just very confident, very honest, and um, definitely empowering. So, What has been, you know, what's been the experience like being with some suffragettes? Um, it's just been really great to watch it grow. And... Um, it started off with like 15 people in the back room of Third and Lindsley, and then we outgrew that and uh, moved on to the listening room. And um, it's just been like really rewarding the relationships I've made with it through, you know, like Lena. And I mean, there's so many, um, you know, like I wrote my first single with two female artists, and my ne next single might be another one with two females from Song Suffragettes. And um, so it's really just a community of women that are just like constantly trying to. Um, encourage each other and support each other and um, it's been really cool to see Nashville change because of it yeah I totally get that Monday nights like I love going to those shows because yeah. I feel like you guys are just all supportive of each mm -hmm. other and also of you know the fans and people that come to the show like That's you guys right. you know everybody that I've met has been like oh yeah I'd love to you know do an interview thank mm -hmm. you so much and it's like it's just a great community it is and everybody's so great and I mean that's part of the you know if a girl comes in and not to say this has ever happened but like you know if a girl comes to songs over death and like isn't nice and isn't supportive they're probably not going to invite her back you know because that's mm -hmm. it's not just about how good you are but it's about how like good your heart is too so and we need places like mm -hmm. that absolutely for sure how, well how did you get started I mean, I get that question a lot, and I really feel like I just kind of, like, ever since I was a kid, I was like, well, why wouldn't I do music, you know? And, I mean, when I was a little girl, I really couldn't sing very well. And, um, like, I just could not hold a tune if you put it in a backpack. And I, but it didn't stop me from singing. I was like, all right, I'm going to sing. Like, this is going to be what I do. And I would, like, sit my whole family down on the couch, and I'd step up on the coffee table, and I'd, like, do, like, choreographed dances to the Cheetah Girls and be like, everyone's going to watch me. Like, don't move. Um, my mom was always singing around the house. Um, she sang in church and, um, she sang national anthems and would, like, recruit people to sing the national anthem at, um, like, local sporting events. And, um, so I was, like, two years old and I'd heard her sing the Star Spangled Banner, like, 500 times. And, um, one day I was like, Mom, I want to sing it. And so she was like, all right. So it was, like, at a basketball game and I, and I sang it and I got all the way up to the Rockets Red Glare and then I was like, okay, you can sing this part now. <laughs> Um, so that, I was two years old then, and she has a video of it, and it's pretty, it's pretty hilarious. Um, but it's just, you know, it really felt like a natural thing for me. Um, I wrote my first song when I was six years old. Um, it was during history class, and it was, I'm sure, god-awful, but it, you know, as soon as I could figure out that I could put my emotions into, you know, something like songwriting, I just couldn't stop, and so I've really been doing it ever since, and you know, I figured out what a publishing deal was when I was 10 and was like, great, you can make money doing songs. Like, not much, but you can make some. And um, I was like, I'm going to do that. I'm going to get a publishing deal. So um, when I signed my first one this year, it was a really cool experience because I'd been thinking about it for the past 10. So, That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Do you have any uh, teachers or family members or friends that kind of inspired you when you were starting out? Yeah. Um, I mean, definitely my mom. Um She's a single mom. She raised me on her own. Um, 
and you know we grew up and I we had like no money and so she was like it, it's hard to like be, support someone's dreams and not have the financial resources to do that um but she just encouraged me every step of the way and just told me I have to work hard and you know nobody's gonna you know there there is no getting discovered there is no like you know it just falls in your lap like you have to work for everything that you want and that's the only way you're going to get it Exactly. If you get it another way, it'll make it even more fleeting than it already is. Um, so she definitely raised me with that attitude. And um, my mom is just one of the most, like, positive and, like, forgiving and just, like, amazing people that I've ever met. Like, one of the most amazing people I've ever, person I've ever met. And um, she had just, like, always taught me, like... Um, she never let anything hold her back. I mean, she's been through so much in life, and she's always just kept, like so positive about it and I think that that's so inspiring because this industry is really really negative at times and um she's just encouraged me and I always call her before I go on stage before I go into a huge meeting and um my mom is just you know I, I don't if she hadn't you know been the way she was I don't know if I would be the way I am and have done the things that I've done so well, shout out to Candace's yeah, mom right now. Mom. She did an awesome job. She got mad at me last week because she's so funny, like, on social media. She, um, I, like, was doing a radio interview, and I made fun of how she uses Twitter, and she called me, and she was like, Kaylee, I'm really upset that you made fun of how I use Twitter. And I'm like, no, Mom! <laughs> I felt so bad. You're making up for it right I now. Am. I am. Well, Oh. Yes, yeah, she'll be very excited. I said something nice and didn't critique her social media skills. So, well, moms well, aren't supposed to be good at Twitter. They're not. You know, it's not no, in the mom. Mine doesn't even book. have a Facebook or a Twitter. None of that. She's she's finally she's learned how to text. So now she'll text me. Yeah. She'll text me pictures. That's adorable. So that's adorable. When did you decide to move to Nashville? Um. Goodness, I had been talking about it since I was a kid, and so when I told my mom I wanted to do it, there was no like surprised there just like all right well you know and um but I would say during high school was when I really really started thinking about it and I was always like mom let's move to Nashville like we can live in a suburb we can do this and she was like Kaylee you're gonna wait until you're done with with high school um but thankfully she was um you know knew this was something I wanted to do and and didn't you know try to make me go to college because she's like I know you would just you you would hate it you know like you wouldn't be able to focus on it because you'd be thinking about music so much um which I think is is also a huge part of you know how I've you know accomplished you know this and you know been able to be a part of Songs of Her Deads and all that um so they didn't have to worry about school so very very thankful for that because it's a different you know it's a different story for everybody but for me it was it was definitely a good choice for me to just focus on music so I would say yeah yeah <laughs> sure. well what are you working on right now well, right now, um, I'm going in the studio later today to um, hopefully record the next single. We'll see. Um, it's always it's always up in the air on what that's going to be, and sometimes it's not until the last minute. Like, you write a song, and then you're like, oh, crap, this is it. Like, this was a single all along. Um, but I've got a good feeling about it, and um, I'm really excited to just get the new music out there. Um, and just touring a lot. Um, later this week... Um, I'm leaving. I'm doing some shows in North Carolina and Virginia. Coming back to Nashville, playing some shows, and um, just booking a lot for this summer. Um, the reception of Fight Like a Girl has made that a lot easier to get out on the road and, and play places I haven't played before. So I'm really excited. I've got a really great band together. They're just so fantastic and just great people, um, which is really important when you're spending 14 hours in a tiny van with them for <laughs> three days straight. So. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm really thankful and just, you know, playing more shows and getting more music out there. Where do you see yourself in a year from now? A year from now. Well, I'd love to have a record deal. I'd love um, to take Fight Like a Girl to terrestrial radio. Um, and, I mean, I would love to, you know, see it crack the top 40. Um, I mean, who knows, you know, if that's the, the plan God has for me, but that's definitely the plan I would love to see myself accomplish. <laughs> Um, but I think, you know, just in a year, I think I'll have met more fans and, you know, hopefully gotten more listeners and, um, written more songs and, you know, put out more music and just keep doing what I'm doing and hopefully, um, you know, it'll resonate, so. Well, do you have a message for all those fans watching? Yeah. I know they've stuck, you know, they've been promoting hardcore. They've been amazing. Um, you guys are so awesome. Thank you so much. I'm so blessed to have you. You guys do so much every day with promoting the single and getting it out there and just 
being positive and when I have a long day and I'm exhausted and I'm tired and I go on Twitter and I see, you know, all the nice messages from you guys, it just makes everything go away and I'm just so thankful that I have you guys. We'll give everybody your links so those that aren't following yes. me yet can follow you. Yes, so on Twitter, um, Facebook, and Instagram, I'm Kaylee Shore, K-A-L-I-E-S-H-O-R-R. On um, Snapchat, I'm Kay Shore. I post a lot of ridiculous videos of my dogs. And then um, on YouTube, I'm Kaylee Shore as well. Awesome. Well, it was so nice chatting Thank with you. you. Best of luck Thank you. to you. I'm sure you're going to go far. Thank you. We're good. Perfect. Awesome. And then what's And then what do we do next? Game. Game. Cool. Like, I barely even had a look at this today. I'm proud of myself. Uh, look <laughs> at you go. I mean, you just, like, it... I feel like it flowed with you. Like, I just, you know, whatever you're saying is, like, I just had questions. <laughs> so. Yeah, these are just random Perfect. questions. Like, hang on. Don't, don't look oh. at them yet. Okay. 